Judge, today's case, deadbeat wife. They're suing about a car, they are yelling about their mothers, but the only thing I know for sure is this thing's gonna be a ride. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Gino Bell and Tracy Robinson. Robinson, the two of you have been married for nine years, but together for 15. Mr. Bell, you have bought Miss Robinson here seeking $8,000 for the balance of a 2006 Honda Sonata. We will talk about that momentarily. But before we do, Mr. Bell, I'm gonna start with you. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your marriage and why we're here in divorce court today? Well, first of all, we had a lot of issues that we were going through. And um, one of them, there was a few times in our marriage that there were things that weren't getting done. And I felt that I had personally had to approach her and say, you are a deadbeat wife. What? Oh. You and never said those but words what's happening? Me. Well, first of all, I mean, there's a lot of things that were going on. First, when I got laid off, yeah. and I, I've been working steadily. Oh, I'm an environmental gosh. worker. He's never oh gotten laid off. Hang on, Ms. Roberts. Okay. Well, my job is a seasonal job. Right. Environmental worker. So In the winter, we don't have a lot off. of work. How'd you get laid off from a seasonal well, now, job? Well, let's not argue. He was off work. Okay. All right. Yes, I can see what your problem is already. Right. As usual. Right. You know, I don't have no problem. You know, first of all, protocols to pay all the bills, if mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? But now we live in a society where it takes two. Mm -hmm. You know, and I don't have no problem with that. But at one time, we were living together because we had separated two or three different times. And the last time we got together, I was trying to make this work and stick with her. But the thing with that is when I did get laid off, I was already paying all the bills because I had already paid. I'd sign on for a car for us. I said, you make sure you take care of this. Right. And I'll take, I'll take care, care of the house and everything else so you can take care of that. Yeah. So in the process of doing that, I ended up getting laid off. And I said, well, I'm going to still try to take care of this. But then there's some issues. Something happened where um, I ended up getting laid off. And then she um, lost her job. Mm -hmm. So, but then... After she got laid off, I mean, sorry, but after that happened, she was able to get employment again. But during the employment, I needed her to help out. Okay. Now, how okay. did she become a deadbeat? I want to hear about the deadbeat part. Yes. Okay. Because during the time she was working, I was laid off, and I was still yet paying all the bills, but I was, under, I was trying to figure out, well, what is she doing with her money? You know, and it takes two. If, I, if I'm getting laid off and I'm still paying all the bills all over here, what is you doing with your money? Let's ask her. <laughs> Ms. Robinson, what were you doing with your money? Thank you so much, um, Your Honor. First of all, he's never once called me a deadbeat and will never again oh. call me a deadbeat, okay? <laughs> oh, that's <right>. number one. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Secondly, yeah, I, I had my job. I did, after 10 years of employment at the same place, I did lose my job over really tragic circumstances. I did lose my job. Mm -hmm. I worked in the same field for almost 20 years. Wow. I've always taken care of things. So, he finally started paying rent wow. and utilities. That's his idea of paying the bills. So, we did go back and forth as far as us getting married and things like that. You know, um, now my mom, when my mom got sick, I did move in, my mom was sick, okay? We got back together. He complained about me taking care of my mother. So, I understand I gotta do my wifely duties. So, I would go to my mom's, I'll say, hey babe, why don't you come over to my mom's house? He wouldn't even come to my mom's house. So I said, fine. I started bringing my mom to our home. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, even in the winter, just to satisfy this man. This man, he tries to act like he's traditional, but he's not. He pays rent and utilities. That's it. And I said to him, if I moved out today, you still have to pay your rent and utilities. You have to pay where you live. So even though when he did get not laid off, when he was going back and forth, I said, why don't I pay half the rent, half the bills? He didn't want me to pay half the bills. The reason why, he's controlling. No, so therefore, even... if he pays all the bills or rent and utilities, therefore, not... don't turn down the air, don't turn up the air conditioner, I pay the bills. Don't turn on them lights, I pay, I pay the, the bills. bills. She's you know, not telling the he truth. told everybody that can told... hear us, all our friends, everybody in the church, anybody he would meet, you know I pay all the bills here. You know I pay all the bills here. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, that's your duty as a husband. Now, our arrangement was no, no, he no, pays no, rent no, utilities. No. I pay car payment, car um, 
insurance. I paid, you know, the other things. Entertainment. I took care of everything. Yeah, entertainment. Everything in the household. Everything was there. Couches, love seats, anything I bought. Yeah. You know, as far as him being controlling, for example, we actually got into this. We were moving into a house. He said, you can have the whole house. What took you so long to get You can decorate the whole house, everything that you want to decorate, except I want a man cave, fine. I also... I want to do a spare room, fine. I also, I want to do um, his son, our stepson's room, okay. Um, then he puts in the dining room. I was doing a formal dining room with crystal and it was gold and silver and crystal. He puts a treadmill in there. Yeah. <laughs> and he said, if I want a treadmill, okay. I can have a treadmill. Yeah, so treadmill. I said, I had okay. The treadmill. All right. treadmill so, came now, Mr. Bell, Mr. Bell, I still don't, I hadn't figured out the deadbeat part. Thank you. Because she sounds it. like she's pretty responsible over there. Can Thank you, you. Can you help me out a little bit? The deadbeat part, the deadbeat part is when she was working and I was laid off. And the reason why I say that, because at first, you know, we were both working together. Right. But and you then, got laid off. Right. So how did she become a deadbeat? She she was still working and paying bills. Where's the dead part? Well, it all comes in as this. Long before it got down to that, the thing of it is, is that um, she wasn't coming home. She was coming in whenever she got mom. ready. Yes, yeah, she was staying with her. She's going to stay with her mom. Yes. But there was, so you there just was... made it up. No, no I didn't make no, it up. No, no, you made that no, dead no, beat part up. No. There, there's no, nothing no. In, in what you're saying. She's taking on other well, obligations, but that doesn't make her a dead bitch. She's paying the bills. You got laid off. She's taking care of your mother. What is it her you wanted her to do she wasn't doing? Not once. When we were together and I was working, did she clean the house? Oh, wow. There, there was nothing Thank being you. done. No, no cooking, no cleaning. Was she making money? And she was making money. And then that time and when were you had, making money? I was making money. So did you do half of the cooking and cleaning? She's had tragedy. She's had problems. I still don't see not taking care of business. Not once. When we were together and I was working, did she clean the house? Oh, wow. She didn't clean the house. She didn't mop. Wow. She didn't sweep. She wow. didn't do anything. When was this? And this is when we first moved together. So I'm decorating and every the time, house. And every other you time we lived together. You mean together. Um, yeah, every time we stayed together. <laughs> Thank you. Every Thank time you. we stayed together, there was nothing Thank being you. done. No, no cooking. No cleaning. Was she making money? And she was making money. And then at times when were you making money? I was making money. So did you do half of the cooking and cleaning? I did. I did all the cooking and cleaning. Come on, she didn't always. do anything. She never did anything. Your Honor, I find that, that hard no to sense. believe. That don't you make know no what? sense As to me. As a matter of fact, took you too long to get to it. Right. Mm -hmm. When I did lose my job, I actually I remember a, a perfect time. I was like, I want to when Gino gets home from work. Because I usually get off at 6. He gets, he'll be home by 5, and I'll get off till 6. He never has a meal when he gets home. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I still cook. What I decided to do was I wanted to fix him some fish. That's one of the things that he liked me to make. I made him some fish. So I wanted hot for when he came home. He came in the door. I was like, hey, I made you some fish, you know, so you won't. I said, go ahead, get yourself washed up, and you can eat. And he was like, oh, I don't even smell any fish. I said, here it is. Oh, I boiled some vinegar and water. What vinegar to use? Oh, that vinegar that was in the cupboard? That's my vinegar. Why would you use that? You ain't working. That cost me $6 a bottle. So are you kidding? Yeah. Did We're you talking do that, Mr. Bell? I did do that. That's the first time she ever cooked. Yeah. She never right. cooked. In she nine never years. Cooked. Okay. What she about never all cooked. the juice? There's juice in the house. Okay. He never let it. you drink juice. He got mm -hmm. to mix up all the juices. And then he always puts apple juice in because he knows I don't like apple juice. And he, he just does, just yeah. he's very controlling, controls oh. the whole house, what we drink, what we eat. Okay, no, Mr. Eat Bell, I want to you say that she, she's yelling all the time. Yes. She's always she's fussing and hollering. Tell me about that. Because she rebuttals anything I say. Nothing I say makes any sense. Nothing I can talk about. Uh, she's not confident, confident about anything I talk about. It's like she'll take someone else's opinion over mine. Mm -hmm. You know, and so she's confrontational with it. Very confrontational. Are you very... confrontational with it, Mrs. No. Robinson? No. Yeah. Your Honor, the thing is, the church that we come from, um, we, um, you know, he's very, very, I try not to say, I am coaching. And so, you know, 
Somebody being Koji for 20 some years, Church she, God in Christ. She, oh, okay. Oh, well, okay. hey, I got, I got audio church. proof. Yeah. So that, um, you got audio proof? Wait, wait yeah. a minute, let me hear the proof of the yelling then. If you yes. got proof. Yeah, she's I'm not very saying I never yelled. Hey, that would be on, crazy. Hang on, I want to yeah. hear. Yeah. <laughs> I feel sorry for this 31 year old woman who come to our home. We let her stay in our home. She comes in the house one day, lays on the floor in the living room, and in front of me and my mother. If you would like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Miss the show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and for exclusive content, go to Apple TV. Wait a minute, let me hear the proof of the yelling then. If you got proof... Yeah, I'm not saying violent. I never yelled. Hey, that would be on, crazy. Hang on, I want to yeah. hear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can hear. That is not my mom! No, not. That is not my mom! No, she's so not. you don't even know no, what you're not. talking don't about. Don't my face. You don't even know what you're talking about. You don't even know what it's like not to have your mom around. Even, you don't even know you how to step out and shut up. You don't know what it's like. You don't even know what it's like, baby. You don't know what it's like. You don't know what it's like. You didn't want me to be talking to my mom. Every time I used to be talking to my mom, and you had to try to be talking to my mom. I got something I got to do. Stop this bad on you. You don't think about anybody but himself. You don't think about anybody but himself. Yeah. Whoa. I can't believe that he would have that. Your Honor. Well, you were both yelling. She just got more volume. Yeah, that's how, that's how I like yeah. it. Yeah. Do that sound she like a submissive wife? My mother, since he wants to say it, Do that sound my like mom a submissive just died wife? two weeks ago. So I can't believe my that mom, he would put that on there. No, my he mom. He says to me, he says to me that I'm with my mom. I should be glad I have my mom. And as you can hear, I said, that's not my mom. Okay. My okay. mom had dementia. Right. Oh. Right. So that was not my mom. I got you. You see right. what I'm saying? I said that because. So for him to have the right, audacity, the nerve. Let me let me to explain. say something like that. I'll it let was. Talk. I remember the argument. I'll let was, you that talk. That was two years ago. I'll let the you talk. fact that he kept that yeah. is just shows his mindset. Mr. Bell, why did you keep that for two years? I kept that because one time, when you know, anytime a person has two faces. They want to act like everything is peaches and cream like you're in doing. one place, and then is and you living under a situation like that. She's very volatile. She don't listen to nothing I said. My mom died in 2008 and 15, and I used to go see my mom. My mom was a paraplegic. She had the, the trach right. in her th six years prior her to her passing took away. Her husband took care of her. Yeah. Now, now, what what is the argument? What yes. what okay. is the problem? We all have mothers. They all eventually get sick. Yeah. Right. And then they all go. Because she had if a problem. It, if it works out. Right. But she had a problem with me visiting my mom, you know? And, and then she always said, well, I got to go check on my mom. His mom died a couple years ago. I got to check on my mom. Me going to see my mom was those a were, problem with him because no, his mom were, had passed those away. Those were excuses not to come home. Argument. Those were excuses. What's the fact that she was taking care of her mother who has dementia got to do with your mother dying. I don't okay. know what you're talking okay. about there, Mr. Okay. Bell. What he believes okay. is for him. Hang no, on, okay. I'm trying okay. to figure out okay. some avenue of logic over the side. Thank we you. had a we, we had a big we had a big falling out um, before I left to go to the BP oil spill because I, I there had you know. That was my job. I don't talk to your daughter because y'all making me crazy. Yes. I don't know what y'all talking about. I don't know what's going on. Everybody wants to tell me how sad their story is, but nobody wants to tell me what you're disagreeing about. You just want me to feel this way about your side and feel that way. So I want to talk to the daughter. Uh, yes. To Maya Bell, you are yes. Mr. Mr. Bell's daughter. Yes, I am. Yeah. Can you help how me are you out doing at all? Amen? I'm fine. Huh? Um, yes, and the same expression that you got when you called me in, she humping and, you know, doing little stuff to gestures, that's what I get all the time. Now, first of all, my family really didn't want them together to begin with, but she eventually fell into the trap and showed us exactly who she was. Now, mind you, she feel that she got all these feelings and emotions for my grandmother and all this stuff. We allow her, gave her the benefit to speak at my grandma's funeral. Okay. Benefit. When she moved out the house, you know that woman took my grandma's pictures out of the frame. That's how petty she is, and laid them on the table as if they wasn't nothing, like it was a piece of garbage to her. You know how many times my dad then broke down and called me like I love this woman, but I gotta deal with this and that and the third. I never disrespect her. I'm, you know what? I'm gonna say that I feel sorry for this 31 year old woman who come to our home. We let her stay in our home. She comes in the house one day, lays on the floor in the living room, and in front of me and my mother. 
That's the type of woman you talking to. We got along good when she stayed there. She actually, um, me and her got That's along good. We watched Have, have, have Nots not Together. And what I'm speaking to Ms. Bell. Ms. Bell. I am speaking. Ms. Bell. See, this is what I dealt with. No. Cut, cut, cut. See. Well, this is what I dealt with, okay? Yeah. She's straight from the streets. She's street. not rational. She is straight from the streets. Thank you. No. So what I did was I tried to talk to her. And yours ain't no better. Yeah. So yours I tried ain't no to better. talk to her. I didn't have no problem signing for the car but she didn't even have a license. And everything in my power was not to do it, but out of love, I did it anyway. What happened? Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. This man did not do this out of love. He bragged to everybody, no. I'm buying my wife a no, car for our anniversary. I know I I'm going to buy my wife a car. Everybody who would hear. No, he did a sermon that in church not, that's and an brought the issue up that's in church true. that that's he bought true. his wife a car. No. Guess who made every payment? No. Me. No. I mean, I have, I mean, I have it on my credit no. karma. It shows no. who made all the payments. I made all the no. payments until I did lose my job after 10 years. We had an agreement. I asked him to help me We had an agreement the with the car. He didn't. And then, consequently, once I did get back to work, I mean, it was too late at that point, and then they were going to go and charge it yeah, off. Well, I got The real got, truth now, about listen, the car I is that... I worked in finance. The company she worked with, they transferred her job back to Ken because she transferred from Ken to What's Dayton because to the she was having problems at that company. So when, when they allowed her to transfer back to Ken, what? she didn't have transportation. Hang on, hang on, hang on. We still got the daughter over there. Let's, oh let's see God. what she's doing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Again, like, see how, you see how the first thing that she came at with is he on my furniture. I sure in the hell did, but yeah. let me tell you why. See? When we had our family reunion, we actually from. had a good this time, and I love Mickey Lickers are having a good time. When I came back home in confidence, talking to Tracy, when I woke up the next day, I said, Dang, my stuff is wet. She said, Girl, you had an accident last night. She said, But don't worry about it. You know, stuff happened. You still young. Really? You enjoying life. We so never for her had to get on front of the screen, that shows you right Goodbye. Thank you. <laughs> next. <laughs> no. So, yeah. No, 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 no. This is, this is a hot mess in a shook champagne bottle. I don't know yeah. what to do with it. You tell very, very long, detailed stories. I think yeah. your life is very, very messy. Very, very, very ratchet. You know, one it step is. off the, off, and off the curb. Is. No, 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 no. You can't make sense out of that kind of stuff. Yeah. There's nothing you I can't. can do with that kind Thank of stuff. You. And let me tell you something. I mean, y'all go to church all Sunday, and then you just leave God right there. Right there. <laughs> yeah. exactly. And just do whatever. Yeah. I yeah. mean, you ain't, it's, it's, it's just a hot mess. Yeah. I don't know what, me, hey, 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 hey. Okay. <laughs> Are you together now? No. No. Stay that way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I agree. I didn't hear a cogent story, yes. All I'm going to do is say no recovery and run. There will be no recovery in this matter. It is so ordered here. Yeah. So you started out by calling her a deadbeat wife. She wasn't too happy about that. Right. Do you still feel that way now after Judge Lynch kind of dug into you a little bit? Well, you know, she, you know, she's my wife and everything, but there was different situations that brought that about. And there was issues where she actually was that person. Is there any hope from you? No. Zero. Zero. Okay. Judge Lynn had a lot of advice for you today. What was your reaction to hearing what she had to say? I like what she said. She's absolutely right. I do not want to be identified with the ratchetness that was on the other side. So this is, as you can see, I'm totally different from that. <laughs>